I am here with Peter Gordon. Hi, Peter. Hi there. How are you? I'm doing quite well, thanks. So Peter is the Director of New Initiatives for the Music Industry at Cal Lutheran University, um, which is quite a title, and we're going to talk about that in a moment. Uh, we're also going to be talking about active learning, inclusive learning, and something dear to me, the importance of music education and, and keeping that alive. So um, again, welcome, Peter. It's great Thank to you see too. you. Yeah. Tell me about your new position. It's very exciting because it's, it's, there's so much beneath the surface. It's not just a, a teaching gig. You're being, you've been given the opportunity to create. Right. Uh, not just a program, but a new point of view in music education. It's interesting. I, I was in the classroom um, years ago teaching traditional college music courses mm -hmm. back at Berklee College of Music in right. Boston. And, and really, so this is me coming back into the classroom after, goodness, how many years is that? You know, too many. Yeah. You know. Um, but we both the, moved out here in the early 80s. Right, right. Yeah. But, but the point is, I am now looking at starting a, a teaching again next week. And the challenge has been, you know, just to recognize all the things that have changed since, since then. Right. right? Yes. Um, I'm teaching millennials. I'm teaching in an age of, of iPhones and, and, and technology that, that is just moving at, a, at an incredible pace. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm in an environment now where educators are talking about the usage of, um, of uh, augmented you know, AI and, and, uh, and virtual reality and how to weave those into the classrooms. Mm -hmm. and, and so for me, I had to really think about it and, and say, what is going to be the purpose of this class next week? Now, I'm talking about college education, so I want to just, you know, be quite clear here. I, for a long time, I've felt keenly aware of the fact that college education is almost obscenely expensive in this country. Yeah, it certainly was when we were in college. And, and it's and even more so now. Yes. If you're the, if you're the parent of a 15-year-old right now, you might be thinking well north of $200,000 for a four-year four education. So the question is, if you send your kid to to study music because that's their passion, that's their dream. What's the responsibility for you at the, at the end of the day to teach that? What is, what is education at this point? Right. And, 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 and how does the class, how do you as a teacher be relevant? And, and again, how do you really define the purpose of your class? Mm -hmm. So I really had to answer those questions um, and, and that's where I think I'm actually kind of excited because I think as musicians, we're natural entrepreneurs. I think we, we've embraced change. Think of all the things that you have done since you arrived out here as a, as a uh, budding guitar player looking for opportunities. Right. How many different opportunities have happened since you've arrived that you didn't anticipate? I've lost count of. Yeah. And, and so many of them were not what I would ex expect. They, right. weren't, they weren't in, on my list of things that I was going after or thought would happen. Right. And I think all of our friends who are still busy, vibrant, even, even after 10 years, right. they're doing things that they never expected to do. So yeah. you, you walk back from that and you go to the classroom and say, well, how do I prepare students in my class here, some of whom may work in the music industry, some may not. Does this education still serve them, whether they work in the music industry or, or not? Mm -hmm. um, we, do you feel that your education served you, has served you? I think I learned a lot on the fly. Because when I arrived, <laughs> right. I was very unprepared for all of what I would call the soft skills, the relationship building Right, skills, but you were right? extremely prepared musically. I mean, uh, yes, you're, you are a woodwind player, a multi-instrumentalist. Yeah. Right. You're a really savvy businessman. I am now, but I wasn't then. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, I think, you know, we both went to college at a time when it was kind of a more of a conservative, conservatory approach in that specialization was what we went for. Right. If you were majoring in guitar, we were going to, to do our very best, or the colleges were going to do their very best to make you the best guitarist you can possibly be. Right. Same thing if you want to be a film composer, um, record producer, or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Now I feel that students who are entering college now are going to enter the, 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 the music industry at a time when there are jobs that we don't even know about yet. 
Right. The jobs that we are preparing for and training for don't even exist right. yet. So how do you create a meaningful classroom experience that actually educates these, these students for that kind of environment, the unknown, if you will. Right. So I'm concentrating this next course next week on what I'm calling the intangibles. It's all the soft skills. It's, it's, it's creativity, it's reliability, it's, it's uh, you know, that, knowing what, knowing how to express yourself. If somebody asks you, what do you do? Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be fumbling, you know? Right. But for, for young students, they don't know that. I, I totally agree. And, and the very fact that you would need to, to be in, including teaching reliability is kind of mind-boggling to me. Right. But, but I'm glad that you are because it's, it's a lost art. Right. And, and I think, you know, my feeling is that most of the things that have made a difference for me in my career have happened because I was able to take a leap of faith. Mm -hmm. Believe in myself. Mm -hmm. Figure out what the job actually was, That's, and yeah, reliably critical. deliver that, and build a sense of trust so that person wanted to come back and and, and work with me the next time. Right. Because as you know, in this business, people like to work with people they like to work with. Mm -hmm. Is that really talent based, or is it really about your ability to contribute to that team? To collaborate, if you want to call it well, that. Well, absolutely. I mean, yeah. we just, uh, my last episode, I had Vicki Randall mm -hmm. on as a guest, who was the first female um, musician on, in the Tonight Show band. I remember. Um, and Branford's Vicky, band. Yeah. And Vicki's a multi instrumentalist and a singer. Mm -hmm. And, but she talked about the importance of just being a good hang. Yeah. You know, and that's part of the reason she got that job. It right. wasn't, in her words, you know, necessarily that she was the most wonderful or the best percussionist in the world. Right. She's one of the best. Right. But she's also a joy to work with and be around. See, one of the truths of all of this is that, and you can probably relate to the, the idea that any given job in this music industry rarely requires more than about 10% of your total talent. Right. So right. the question is, if talent isn't the differentiator, <laughs> how do you define what is? Mm -hmm. you know, how do you get the job? How do you get the work? How do you sustain a career over decades and, and adapt? So you've got to innovate, you've got to be creative, right. you've got to adapt. So my focus is actually trying to create a classroom environment that will, I hope, promote an entrepreneurial mindset, give students a sense of knowing who they are, um, you know, by peer engagement, um, you know, bringing opinions into the class, discussing them, you know, right. this is the inclusive idea that I think really is so important. So th that's what you mean when you say inclusive Absolutely. learning. Which, by the way, you know, like one of the, the ironies or the, you know, the, the paradigm right now of education is that you can self-educate, right. you know, ad nauseum. You, you go on YouTube and you can become an expert at anything. I, you know, I from could, yeah. bomb making, sadly. You yeah. know, to becoming a better musician. Right. But but that's not where you would actually get um, to, to develop the skill set of, of communicating with people, with interacting, with being a forward thinker. Right. There are more great lectures available online than you can ever possibly <laughs> teach in the classroom. Right. And so, you know, when I look at my own children, my son just graduated. From, with a mechanical engineering degree, and he is furiously online just doing courses on, on artificial intelligence mm -hmm. and, and, you know, data science, and he's just got this sense that, that or I get the sense from him that, that learning is just going to be a continual thing for him, mm -hmm. and he's excited about it. Right. And I would like to be able to, to, to be part of producing a generation of students that is excited about this kind of lifetime learning concept. That, that's the beauty, what you said, to, to be an influencer in, in, in really helping propel the next generation right. um, and, and to stay ahead of the curve. You right. know, you're, you're really looking at and you're seizing an opportunity to not just teach and educate, but to, but to really look towards what is needed down the line. So yeah, when I, when I just, I, I jump ahead to next week and I know okay. I'm going to be sitting with seniors who have grown up with a, a kind of an innate sense of technology and social media and so on and so forth, far beyond my, my awareness of right. it. Yeah. I, I bring 
I bring the, the years of experience and having, having uh, succeeded and failed in a number of different uh, you know, ways. I bring that kind of seasoning to the class. Yeah. But I think this is going to be a, a, a classroom in which um, we're all going to learn from each other. Yeah. You know, again, we go back to this inclusive idea. I want to be a part of the discussion. I want to, I want to navigate uh, you know, in such a way that, that students can feel that their opinions are, are uh, valid. Mm -hmm. I want them to be able to argue those opinions. I right. want there to be disagreement and, 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 and have validity behind the disagreements. I want there to be conversation and dialogue. And I think it's developing those sensibilities that, quite frankly, are going to allow you to be much more effective in that job that hasn't yet emerged. I just noticed on LinkedIn the other day, there was a, there was a young graduate from, from Berkeley that I knew when he first arrived in mm -hmm. town by the name of Will Cady. Mm -hmm. And um, I can't remember what his initial goal was out here, but he was just named chief strategist for Reddit. And I'm thinking, Reddit is what my son basically lives on. Right. And he shares these, these wonderful you know, memes and stories and, and, and jokes, and he's just addicted to Reddit. So the idea that this music graduate from Berkeley mm -hmm. found his way into a job that he, I'm sure, wasn't aware of, when he started college, Absolutely. and even probably when he left college, right? And here he is, you know, in this, this amazing position. You know, there are there are musicians that are um, that are you know excited about coding, that that are very engaged in, in Silicon Valley with companies like Facebook, Google, you know, Apple, of course, mm -hmm. Apple Music, and 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 Spotify. All right. those playlists are curated by young musicians right. who just happen to know coding. So what we're looking at now is really, I think. A, an almost a moral imperative to, to prepare musicians with not only the, the technology that is, that is uh, important in their field, and that, that includes performance majors, that includes everybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if a performance major now thinks they're going to be in the recording industry and not have a home studio, not understand Pro Tools, mm -hmm. not understand how f files are sent across the internet, and recording is done and have preamps for their mics and all mm -hmm. those kind of stuff. They don't understand the technology to keep that career going. And then they don't understand the business model that actually makes that scenario work. Right. Which is a very different business model, by the way, than they would have learned in college at, in music business. Absolutely. None of us predicted that we would be manning our own studios right. and owning them right. and becoming the engineers that we've all become. Yeah, so I'm resisting calling these courses even music business. I'm just calling them music industry because to me this is about the industry. This is, this is the ability for you and me to have multiple ways in which we can be creative musicians. Right. It's not just with an instrument in our hand. Right. Right? That's exciting to yeah. me. Yeah. So just circling back and winding up our conversation. Yep. Uh, you mentioned, you know, in all the years that you've been doing this, all of your successes and failures, and I love that you said that because I think it's really important to for students to know that it's to not only is it okay to fail, you should be encouraged to to fail because those are the things that are going to, you yeah. know, if, if if that are going to take you to the next level. You know, failure and then getting yourself up off the ground and brushing yourself off and starting again is so critical to being successful. I think it's fair to say that, <laughs> this may be a little glib, but I think Los Angeles, you know, in the entertainment industry is built on more failure than it is success. Absolutely. I'm, I would I'm agree with you. I'm reading a book called The Human Species at the moment on, on creativity, and Timothy Robbins says, you know, um, the actor, he says, failure is your friend. Yes. You have to embrace failure. I, I totally agree. Because the truth is that teaches you more right. about what success will actually look like when it happens. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. And uh, so I'm kind of at this point where I'm really kind of ready to reinvent myself as an educator. Good. I'm, I'm excited about the idea of, um, of being entrepreneurial about this class and mm -hmm. hopefully having the students become uh, you know, entrepreneurs. Because at this point, every young career is a startup. Right. And the best thing wow. you can do is to equip students to understand the basics of what a startup mentality is. Yeah, if you well can said, do Peter. that, I think you've done something uh, meaningful that will allow them, as I said, to be able to spot opportunities and, and, and make those opportunities into something unique in the future. 
thank you for the amazing work that you are continuing to do in education. Thank you. Um, and the commitment that you've made in your life to not only remain an artist and a musician yourself, a very accomplished one, thank you. but to never stop um, it being including your mentoring aspect and, and driving music education forward. And if for people that don't live in the Los Angeles area, that don't physically have the access to take classes at your school, is are there going to be internet possibilities, or are you writing still books working on or? all of that stuff? Um, but if they're interested in knowing more, just go to callutheran.edu. Okay. C a l l u t h e r a n dot edu. The brilliant thing that I'm finding at this institution that I've never really been around before is the fact that this is a this is a vibrant liberal arts university, and I just happen to be teaching music, right. you know, yeah. at, at a time when I think one of the one of the greatest things a musician can be is interesting and well-rounded, right? <laughs> I agree. I mean, if you're not an interesting person, your music is not going to be interesting, right. you know? Yeah. Uh, and, and so I'm fascinated that I'm dealing with a whole different breed of student now, and, um, and I'm kind of excited about mm -hmm. what lies ahead, you know? I'm excited for you. Thank you. Uh, we are on Making It with Terry Wallman, me, and uh, we're at the NAMM show, and once again, I want to thank Peter Gordon. It's, my it's pleasure. really a pleasure to thank see you, you. Yes. and best of luck with your new venture. Thank you, Terry.